What do you want to do here? All right, welcome back. I hope everybody's uh, gained a few pounds from their meals. If you had, and hopefully you had a, had a nice one. Um, I uh, had a nice break. Didn't work for two days and uh, two and a half, in fact. Felt good. <laughs> um, okay, so this was the, the vote. And um, what I'm going to do is go over this today, advances in sen advanced senpai pai dai. So we'll talk about more of that. I'm going to try to do this Wednesday. Um, I've about got that prepared. And... Uh, and then we can do that next Monday, a week from today. And four. We'll do that. We can do that one on the following day. Talk about linearization. Sound good? For the last four um, in class lectures. So we've got four in class lectures left. Now, <coughs> One other thing that I was asked um, if I put up the notebooks from last week. So I put up those, these three notebooks. This one is all up through the matplotlib animation. This one is the animation with the pi die that you would have to run on your local computer. And I'm, ho I'm hoping that uh, I got a solution to get it working on the server. So um, maybe I can get that up soon. And then uh, this one is uh, the notebook for the non-contributing forces that we worked out. All right. So those are the three notebooks from Wednesday. This one uh, gets you up to FR equals FR star, I think, symbolics. And then this simulates. Anyways, th those four notebooks, you know, have a lot, a lot of stuff in it that's going to be helpful. And um, I think I'm missing a couple notebooks. I got disorganized. Um, I think, um, yeah, there's a couple of notebooks that we did working through the um, principal moments of inertia and stuff. I'll try to get those up soon, too. Sorry about that. That's uh, down there. But I think most everything else is there. Can I put my lecture notes up? I might have a, one a missing lecture note too that shows the problem definition. All right, I'll, I'll work on those. Um, I scheduled this for another take-home exam to be due next Monday. And um, I do not have that prepared yet. So <clears throat> if I get it prepared by Wednesday, then I think we'll, we'll keep that. All right, and I'll try not to make it so long. But I think we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll basically test you on um, the things we've done since the other exam, and, I, and I'd like to see you simulate a system of some sort, I think. And, um, and so that'll likely be the kind of problem, and a um, problem or two related to that, and maybe uh, uh, non-contributing forces, and maybe something about inertia. So those are... Three, the three big to topics are the mass and inertia stuff, um, forces and torques, and, um, and then um, forming FR star and simulating. All right. Um, and then I may, I may, would you guys, do you want to keep this or would you want to push it back? We could just make it do the same day as the presentation. Raise your hand if you'd like to do the same day as the presentation. All right. We'll move this back, and then, but you'll have to, you know, make sure that you turn in your reports and uh, and have your presentation. And these presentations is going to be. What do we? We got. Uh, I, I don't want to hang around too long on Thursday, the December the fourteenth. So we'll do like. How many we got? Uh, we'll do like five minute lightning talks, and you can show what you do. So they'll be snappy. You want to get to the point, and um, uh, you don't need to get in, go into a lot of the detail, but it'll be fun, I think, to show other, the other, everybody in class and, and me sort of what you've worked on there. Um, 
and I'll I'll post a little more. Um, I'll, I'll reread my description there, but this is going to be in terms of a Jupyter notebook that I want you to turn it in. So I want a, a well-formatted, nicely organized, functioning Jupyter notebook from, you know, if I run kernel restart, run all, it all runs, graphs come up, all graphs and things should have nice labels and axes and text explaining stuff, right? It should look, um, but you will have blocks of code that will be interspersed in that report, okay? And then I will um, try to make it so you submit it the same way we did the exam. If not, I'll have you submit the file to Canvas or something. But uh, I think the way that thing works in the server is typically I have to give you a, I guess if I gave you a blank notebook to write in, you could do that and then upload that or something. I have to, I have to double check if that would work. Anyways, any, any questions then about the remaining class? So we have four lectures. It'll be advanced SymPy today, trajectory op optimization, um, uh, alternative coordinates, and linearization. For those in all of those. And then we're going to shoot for this. Um, it's possible we move that to Wednesday if I, I'm constantly behind this quarter. So <clears throat> we'll see what if I can, I can pull that off. I've got to make the final project for my other class and the exam tomorrow, which is, it often takes me six to eight hours to make an exam, so it's a long, I don't know whether I'll do it or not. Questions? All right, if, you, if you're not significantly, you know, into your project, you better get the get a move on it, right? Because you don't want to come, we got two more, two and a half more weeks, essentially, to come and meet ask questions so you guys can figure things. You're going to hit hurdles. It's not going to be trivial. Um, and uh, and um, just be prepared. This, this is, it's not going to be simple. Okay? So work, uh, get working on those, make some progress, and hit, hit some hurdles so that you can ask questions, have some questions to ask. If you wait to the last minute, you're going to be pulling your hair out. I promise. Okay? Not that I want you to, but uh, start get 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 ahead on that. You should be um, able to at least at this point get the symbolic equations in motion fully for your system. I think that would be a good point, and then that gives you the remaining time to sort of uh, get get the simulations working, make some sense of what what the what happens, and um, and then and write your report. Okay. Any other any questions about everything here? Okay, um, I had um, a question about how do you apply, I'm going to start with this question, how do you apply uh, some kind of torque uh, or, fo or input force, like if you, want, if you have an um, arm that you want to apply a torque and make it move, how do you how do, you do that? Um, what I showed you the, uh, the other day, it was, we showed you how to apply zero torque to it, um, or maybe a single value, so it's a constant torque, but maybe you have some other function, maybe you want to apply uh, any, any arbitrary function um, that drives that. So let me open up, um, I'm going to make a copy of, I think this one, let's see, this was the I think the one where we simulated, we got through simulation, let's check. All right, got through simulation here, and, uh, and the matplotlib animation. All right, so file, make a copy. And let's change this to the 27th. All right. So <clears throat> there's two ways to do this. Um, okay, so the question is, is right here we sort of made arbitrary specified inputs for that force and, that, and the torque that were applied to our 
um, slide, uh, double pendulum on the sliding block system. And uh, you may want these to be some kind of arbitrary function of time, um, etc. So you can do this symbolically, right? If I, um, instead of making f just this arbitrary function of time, I could um, make it something like uh, 5 times sine of t, omega t or, or something. Right, I could make a sinusoidal forcing, and I could define that symbolically, and it would uh, show up in the equations of motion. So if I execute this, let me get a little more screen space. Um, and let's get down to where we've defined the forces. All right. So here... Um, is where I introduced that force F. So let's just say we want to make it a sinusoid, um, sinusoidal forcing there. Let's, uh, let's redefine F here as um, 5 newtons. Let's just say 5 times uh, the sine of um, 0 0.2. Well, let's just do... Um, Let's do it all symbolically. Um, let's do pi divided by 10 radians per second times time. Um, to get a time, did I introduce a time variable? I didn't explicitly introduce time. Uh, the best way, you could just define this as sm.symbols t, but it's better to do this and this is not that clean and I, and I have a fix that will be in the next version of SimPy but uh, <clears throat> the, the sim symbolic variable for T is stored on this sort of hidden um, hidden attribute on, on, dynamic, on that dynamic symbols function and all of, this, all of the routines in SimPy mechanics when it has to take a derivative with respect to time or something, it looks, for, it looks to that value. So it's better to snatch it out of there than to create it explicitly uh, because sometimes um, you may want to define t uh, in a different way um, for some, some reason. I don't want to go into that too much. But if you want to get t, uh, a symbol for T, snatch it out like that. All right. So now when we create F here, we get a symbolic F, and uh, and now it's this function, and then we're going to see that show up here in the equations of motion. We keep going. Do our equations of motion. Um, get F R and F R star. And now we, we just see symbolically right there, F sine um, pi over 10 T. And in fact, I, I might, this might fail um, symbolically for what I'm imagining doing here. But uh, now, um, the T is explicit. We no longer have this, this specified thing, so there's only one unknown variable there. Inner conditions, and then right, now, if this fails, um, yeah, figured. I think that um, I don't. I don't think this is something I, I'm going to debug now. But uh, this might be. It may not um, do the correct thing to deal with T explicitly. So don't do it that way. And I and I and I'll fix that. <laughs> 
I'll fix that in the in PyDi. Um, all right, here here's the let's go back to where we redefine this force and just I'm just going to comment that out and uh, redefine f up here at the top. So let, let's get it back to an arbitrary function of time. And uh, in fact, uh, I'm going to restart the kernel and then come down to here. And I'm going to do cell run all above. So this will get all the symbolics back in order. And um, OK, so I'm right here. Let's take a look at this system class, help. And if we read this carefully, this specifies thing. It says that it's a dictionary. It's optional. If you don't provide it, it'll make all of those specified zero. So we had F and T are our specified forces and torques. Um, this, this dictionary maps SymPy functions of time objects or tuples, tuples of them to floats. Okay, that's what we had before. We just set them equal to a single float value of zero. That would give a constant uh, F or T. You could also set them as NumPy arrays, and uh, that would also give a constant value. So if I that matches with tuples. So if I if I set f and t to a NumPy array, it would set each of those constant. I'll show how that what that means in a second. Or functions of the state and time. All right. So that last one is a key. Um, key item. So what we can do here, I'll show you a few options. So we had f equals 0, 0.0. This is that option one that basically says for each, this is what we did, um, set a constant value. And I could just set a single value, it'll, it'll set that uh, to a value. If I want, I can set these also like so. If I did um, a tuple f comma t, and then mp dot array zero comma zero, that's equivalent, and it sets um, each of them to zero. Same thing. All right. So another thing we can do, though, say we want this sinusoidal function. Just of, Let's say we want t to be 1 and uh, f to be that sine function. You can create a Python function. Um, name it something. And it's going to take two arguments, x and t. x is the state array, right? So we've got six states here. So it'll be a NumPy array, 1D NumPy array with these six values. And t is a, is a floating point number, whatever value time is. So this will say, take the current state and the current time, calculate something, and, uh, and, re and return an answer. So we want to return a single value uh, if we're just doing it for f. So here I could do return um, 5. 0 0.0 times np dot sine of uh, np pi divided by 10.0 times t. So it's not a function of the state. It's only a function of time here. So I'm just ignoring this. But we have to keep this here because the system expects these functions to always have that signature. All right? um, you could easily make feedback work right here. Right? If I want to um, say, if I want to say uh, I want proportional feedback on a particular state, I could have a gain times whatever state um, inside here, and I could return something. So you can use these to implement controllers too. Right? So I want this specified to be a, if I want it to be a function of the current state, then it is. Then you're closing the feedback loop there. Right now we're not. It's just an open loop applied force. Okay, 
and this returns a single value. And, um, and then you could do specifieds equals this dictionary again, f, give it this func the name of that function, and then we'll say t equals 1.0. So it makes t constant, and then it says use this function to calculate f when it do, when you do the simulation. So now, when I run, now I create the system, and and now when I integrate, it integrated. <laughs> that an error. I need to fix the other one. And then we can uh, go ahead and take a look at I'll look at the better plot. See what happens now. So. <clears throat> With, uh, with that, it should have um, gotten, we should have seen a different behavior. And maybe I need, maybe I need a higher magnitude. Um, it should get into a, some kind of steady state. Let's make this, um, let's see what 50 newtons does. So that looks funny. It doesn't look like it's oscillating. Maybe I don't have, uh, maybe my frequency is bad. I want to do, um, uh, let's say we want to do uh, a, we're simulating over 10 seconds. So let's do um, a period per second. So that's one hertz, and that would be um, two times np dot pi. Right? Or is it one, one over uh, cycles per second times uh, one radian is uh, oh yeah. two, two pi cycles is one ra radian. Two pi radian is one cycle. So yeah, two, times two pi. All right, let's try that. See what we get. Taking a little longer to integrate. So that's goofy too. I don't know what exactly I'm doing. So now I got five seconds there. I should see. We should see this thing um, moving. I mean, here, here's the here's the one second period right there, right? <clears throat> so it, it gets into steady state, but there is some funny um, funny business going here. A little bit of in, un, instability in the integrator. I have to, I have to investigate that some more. I think uh, is our. System just too stiff. Um, so by default, it uses um, this integrator. Did I show this last time? I thought I showed it. I showed it to my other class. Uh, ODE four five is a um, routine in MATLAB, and that runs a runga kata. Um, fourth order, four five system. This um, is is a uh, runs the integrator in um, called L Soda from the library ODE pack. It's sort of a battle tested Fortran integrator. So this is um, ODE pack, and uh, it has two pieces to that. Um, it runs a. Let me state it down here. It doesn't say in the doc, but <clears throat> solves the initial problem for stiff or non stiff systems. And what it does is it actually switches between two integrators, depending on if it detects stiffness 
right? So if, you, if it sees rapid change at a time step, it will uh, use the, um, let's just look it up. I thought it was in the documentation here before. Um, LSOTA ODE pack. Here it is. So, um, <clears throat> automatically sticks between a non-stiff Adams integrator and a stiff BDF method. He uses the non-stiff initially and then dynamically monitors the data in order to decide which method to use. Okay. So in general, it's sort of a it's a decent general ordinary differential equation integrator that can handle stiff and non-stiff systems, and. Um, I may just have the spring stiffness a little high compared to the force that I'm applying to, and we're um, getting a um, at, at higher that's that higher frequency natural frequency um, might be that other that value there. But and, um, there's a lot of integrators available, and um, you can pass in. Any, any integrator to that system class that you may want that's available if it has a, if it's wrapped in Python. If, if you can find a function and call it in Python, you could pass it in. Uh, SciPy has a, well, if you look at the uh, integ integrate, so <clears throat> it has this, that's the default one. It has this that has um, about four integrators in it. And then SciPy 1.0, which just got released, has a new set of uh, about five or six more integrators, and um, including Runga-Kutta 3.2 and Runga-Kutta 4.5. And uh, and then there's another there's another package called uh, Scikit ODEs, for example. Scikit ODEs. Um, this here, I believe. This has a number of solvers too. Um, Sundials is a really nice, more modern library for um, integrating ODEs that has some nice things, um, including this is for um, ODEs and this one is for differential algebraic equations, which you sometimes find when you have um, either quaternions or when you have, uh, um, you can also find, get, have those when you have uh, motion constraints. And then there's, there's your 4, four 5, and another Runga-Kutta, et cetera. So there's a bunch of ODEs available, a bunch of things available. I'll install this on, on the server, too. Um, I don't think I have that installed, but you can integrate equations. So I think, I think that's all I'll say right now for that. Um, Unless if I have uh, cut down the stiffness a little, Let's see what we get. Hmm. Yeah, some some fishy. I'm not quite sure. I mean, that could be. Yeah, <clears throat> it's going nuts. Um, it might just be bad, bad initial conditions, and I need to like pick, pick better initial conditions. I'll, I'll look at that after class and upload this. All right, but anyways, that's that's one way to do that. I guess we could just try a uh, a much lower force here too. One newton. There you go. That that looks a little more normal. But then it, it doesn't seem like it's affecting the system. Anyways, I need to pick better initial conditions there. But the, the gist of that is um, now at every time step, it's calculating this force with this function. All right? And uh, you can even do things like this. If I did uh, def um, sine f t, 
x t and then I could um, return a numpy array of two values now and I could do um, 1.0 times np sine 2 times np dot pi times t and um, 2.0 times np dot cos 2 times np dot pi times t. So if I return this 1D and NumPy array, then I can put this one up here. Then I could do this. F comma t equals sine F t. Right, so that basically says the function that I pass in is going to give me these two values at any time t. And then you could sort of calculate them all in one function if you want to. You could do them in separate functions, or you can lump them together if you output an array, a 1D array. So then if I <coughs> simulate that, it should work. And then this this is the results of it of it getting forced at at both of those coordinates, right? The f was applied to the sliding, and the uh, and the torque applied here. So I'll I'll pick some better numbers for that and and load that up. So that that's how you that's how you got to do this, and I'll fix the bug that lets you define it symbolically too. Um, but that may not happen before you guys need it, but this, this is how you apply arbitrary functions. So if you can define it in, in a Python function there, you know, um, you, can, you can make it happen. All right, so that should cover um, most of your use cases, but come see me if it doesn't. There's some other, uh, like if you, <clears throat> if you have had to do, um, if I measure a force on a real system, and then I make a model, and I want to apply that force to my model. Um, this doesn't work because you, you only have data at certain time steps, and it might need what that force should be in between two of the time steps that you measure that. So then you need to set up some kind of interpolation to pick any, any time t that's useful. So there's, there's some other cases that might, you might need. But if you can, there you just have to define some kind of function. You can have... Uh, if and else statements in there too, right? You can have the force turn on after some time, turn off, um, have it a piecewise, you know, at the, during this time it's sinusoidal and after that it's a ramp, whatever. You, you can create any function you want in, in that, in there, and, and things should work. Chris? Mm-hmm. Correct. So this, yeah, so this order matters, right? Um, internally, the system will grab the first thing and, and apply it wherever F is needed. Second thing, apply it wherever T is needed. So these, this order has to match the order of your tuple there. And um, other questions? So that, that should get you started. Um, I don't know why my system is behaving badly. I think it's just a bad mismatch of um, parameters here. 2 pi. That's at 1 hertz. St the stiffness of that thing is 10 newtons per meter. So if I, if I apply... Uh, one newton, then I get one. It'll move one tenth of a meter. That, that seems like that seems okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll investigate that. All right. Okay. So that's that. Now, where are we at? Okay. What I'll, what I'm going to do next is um, show you. Some of the details of uh, I want to look at a simple uh, non-holonomic system, and 
we're going to derive the equations for that, and then I'm going to show you some of the details of, of ensuring that your simulations and such work for non holonomic Does anybody have non holonomic things in their project? Nobody dared go there, huh? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, um, they're fun. You're missing out. <clears throat> but that, that's what we'll look at now. So first, let me just sketch out a system that, that we can work with here. So you may have done this. You may have looked at this in a homework problem. I'm not sure. Um, okay. Okay, so inertial reference frame here in, and um, the system I want to look, look at is a, uh, a disk, a thin, a thin disk rolling on the plane defined by nx and ny. Okay, so it's a relatively simple system that um, will have some non-holonomic rolling constraints. So... Here, I'm going to call point C, and um, we're going to locate point C with uh, coordinates X and Y there. And at point C, that's going to be the contact point of this disk. Let me use some other co colors here to help. If I, um, let's see. Let's uh, draw this like so if I draw a line here that lies that that line here lies in the plane, we're going to call create an auxiliary reference frame that I'll call that I'll attach to this line called y. And that's going to stand for the yaw. So in uh, vehicle dynamics terminology, we talk about yaw, roll, and pitch. And so I'm going to use those to define um, this thing. So this is Q1 is going to be the yaw angle. And <clears throat> if I take this disk, I should have brought some kind of some kind of disk. Um, if I take this disk and uh, and this is my coordinate system and uh, and then we had say we have x pointed this way if I rotate it about the vertical right that's yaw and then if I lean it over this is the roll angle All right so I yaw roll and then pitch it right to get the rolling All right I don't have a disk here so <clears throat> now if I I'll just use another color, uh, geez. Why did it do that? <clears throat> At least it saves your work. <laughs> okay, so now we have, this is this yaw frame. And uh, let's, uh, let me just draw the axes here. So this is going to be y, x, and 
in the plane yy. And then if I uh, draw a vertical line that's parallel to nz through the point, <clears throat> we can imagine a new line. If I rotate about yx through q2, I can draw this line. And so this angle, q2, is going to be the roll angle of that. And, <clears throat> and we can sort of sketch out a little um, boundary of all these parallel lines in this uh, disk make it orange There's a disc that's leaned over, rolling. So we've got that. And then lastly, we need to rotate about uh, the pitch angle so that so the disc can actually roll. And let me add, uh, go back to red. And this unit vector, um, I'm going to call this, I called this the uh, L frame, actually. So LZ points up there and it's going to rotate about ly which is the same as yx I'm sorry lx which is the same as yx All right okay and then the last one is a rotation about the ly axis for the pitch so the ly axis sticks out perpendicularly perpendicular here l y and we're going to rotate about that axis and um and so here is l z and if we rotate about that we would find that this axis is going to be RZ. And that's going to be Q3. And so we'll call the rigid body R here. Um, we call this auxiliary frame here L, and then the other auxiliary frame Y. Any questions on this definition here? So it's, I've created two auxiliary frames to help manage this yaw roll and pitch angle. And that Q3 is pitch. Or the, ro the angle of actual roll, rolling. But it's relative to that LZ of the yaw frame, right? So I got all everything pointing. I think I got everything pointing. So if I had a positive Q3, um, it's going to roll uh, away from the NX axis, right? Along. So if I set Q1 to 0 and Q2 to 0, then I have this disk that is aligned with the NX axis. And if I rotate about the, the y, it's going to roll in the negative in x direction. Yeah? Questions here? Is the L frame right-handed still? 
Yeah, did I screw up? <laughs> oh, I, I totally screwed up. My in frame is not right handed. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. All right, let's, let me uh, repair that. I drew the coordinates. <clears throat> the thing is, is in, in vehicle dynamics, you always draw Z pointing down. For aircraft and vehicles, it's like the SAE standard. And, but it c gets confusing when you do that. So I had it in my notes pointing down, and I just flipped it. And anyways, that's why it's all screwed up. Yeah, it didn't make sense. It should roll, it should roll along in X. All right, so let's change these to, this is now in Y in X. So my in frame is now right-handed. And then that's going to update a lot of these other ones. So then we'll have... Um, This is now y. This is x. And z is still pointing up. This is x. Z, z. I think that's, is that correctly defined now? So q1, I rotate still about z. That's fine. And uh, when Q1 is 0, it's aligned with Y. And so Q1, and then I rotate about Y through Q2, and then about X for Q3. I think that's all correct. Does that make sense now? Sorry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we got point C, and then the center of this disk is R0. <clears throat> we are going to have two non holonomic constraints, velocity constraints, if I say this is pure rolling, no slip. Um, and so the velocity of point C that's fixed in R in the in frame has got to always be zero. And that's going to give us two velocity constraints. I used x, y, q1, q2, and q3 as coordinates to define this system so far. All right? And uh, with two velocity constraints, so that's 5, n equals 5. Two velocity constraints is going to, p is going to be um, 5 minus 2, so I'll have 3 degrees of freedom in this system. And then um, two velocity constraints, and uh, so three degrees of freedom. So this this problem is surprisingly not uh, non non trivial to get correct. Um, and let me get my notes up so I get it correct. was happening. Uh, I forgot why this happens. I'm logged in somehow, some other way.
Okay, so let's I'll try to keep, let's see if I can get this figure up beside the notebook, at least at first. So I'm going to open up a new notebook here. So it's uh, it's 10:50. Why don't we take a five-minute break before uh, before I start typing? All right. So come back at 10:55. Uh, Reported and um, and let's create some uh, variables. Uh, a few things that I forgot didn't mention is um, there's a mass. Disk has a mass. Disk has a radius, and there's the acceleration due to gravity. So we're, those are going to be our only constants, m, r, g. And, and then let's get these coordinates, q1, q2, q3, x, comma, y, m, e, dot, dynamic symbols, q1, q2, q3, q, x, comma, y. Then I'm going to introduce some generalized speeds that I'll call eventually. And if you do uh, u1, u2, u3, vx, vy, velocity x, velocity y, do an underscore there, you'll get those will print out nicely. Okay, so those are our coordinates and our speeds. Um, I've purposely chosen the variables for these to be diff different than just another Q um, because of I'm going to pre-plan and make these my dependent speeds and these my independent. I have two dependent speeds, three independent with these velocity constraints. All right, so let's set up some reference frames and I'll try to um, we got n and then y is going to be n dot orient new with respect to um, I'm sorry be named y. We'll do an axis rotation, and it's going to be through q1 about the in z direction, and then we uh, rotate for the yaw. Uh, sorry, the roll frame. L equals y dot orient new. L axis. This is the roll angle, Q2, and that's going to be about Y, Y. And then finally, the disk itself um, is relative to L. Also an axis rotation through the angle Q3 about L dot X. Okay, Chris. Yeah, so I'll do that next week when we talk about all these coordinates, but that was three rotations, right? And it turns out that this is what is called a body fixed rotation. So if I think about coordinates stuck to R, right? Essentially, my R, my R frame. Um, there were three angles that they had that I had to pass through to get that. And this, and if you notice, those angles are associated with Z, X, Y. So this is called a body fix Z, X, sorry, Z, Y, X rotation. <clears throat> if I look at R D C M with respect to n, and I could probably 
simplify that a little so we can compare it e more easily visually. Or maybe not. <clears throat> I could also do, if I look um, in the Orient New documentation, there's different types of rotations. And if I come down here, there's this body one. And notice that I could orient A with respect to N using body fixed rotations with three angles and I specify what order those rotations should happen. So this is equivalent. It won't create any auxiliary reference frames. Um, so I could do the uh, same thing there, R dot orient new with respect to N body fixed, give it the three angles, Q1, Q2, Q3, and then we had uh, Z, Y, X rotations. So if I do that, I get a type error. Oh, this is supposed to be a parentheses here. Still get a type error. Need to supply a valid name. I've got that. Um, this is supposed to be uh, R equals n dot orient, with a, and we call it R. I was using the orient new, not the orient. And then, if I take a look at R dot DCM n, I get the same same result there. All right, but it skips any intermediate things. And there are 24 sets combinations of XYZ rotations that can give you, can give you um, these different uh, DCMs. Um, these are not just Euler angles. Um, Euler angles are one of the 24. Um, so it's very similar. Um, Euler angles are, are specifically uh, X, Y, X. They're always, um, I think Euler angles are always, uh, you always find two of the same. It'll be like X, Y, X or Z, Y, Z. Um, so Euler angles are a set of maybe three of them. Okay, so there's, there's, in, there's in fact um, something called, bod there's body fixed, and, and there's a, a set of those are the are Euler angles. A set of those are also something called, a um, guy that started with a name, some, uh, we can just look it up, I guess. Uh, Tate Bryan angles. All right, so Euler angles are one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, six sets. Z X Z, and then Tate Bryan angles are another set of six. And we used uh, what was it? Y Z X Z Y X Z Y X is. Is it there? Z, Y, X. It's a Tate Bryan angle, technically. But notice all the Euler angles, Z, Z, X, X, Y, Y, so they um, have that, that particular pattern. So body fixed angles are um, made up of all of these. This is 12. And if I, I uh, then check back on these, but there's, there's either um, 24 valid body fixed or 12 valid body fixed. Maybe it's just 12. Um, and then there's another thing called space fixed. If I, instead of thinking about the, the um, um, axes that's fixed to the body and all the rotations, I can also just rotate about axes that are fixed to the original reference frame, N. So if I always rotate about NX, NY, and NZ, that's another set of 12 space fixed angles. And you can't get the rotation, you can't, um, you can't just pick, like I can't pick Y, Y, Y. That's not going to do anything. So there's only a certain set of combinations that will get you to any arbitrary or orientation. I'll, I'll talk about that some more when we, uh, next week. Okay? So that was an aside. Uh, referen reference frames. Um, let's um, now do, if I do R, N, velocity, and N, I get this expression expressed in the R frame. 
I'm going to suggest making um, the measure numbers here as our, uh, define those as our generalized speeds. Okay? So, um, what, what we'll do there then is let's say that R set angular velocity. Um, actually, I want to store this first. Let's do omega of R and N um, that has the, in terms of the Q dots. Okay, so I'll make that omega R in Q dots. So that's that expression. Now let's set the angular velocity in N to U1 times N, um, sorry, Rx plus U2 times Ry plus U3 times Rz. Okay, so now <clears throat> I'm basically saying that the body fixed angular rotation is, how, is, is what I'm going to define my um, speeds at. So if I'm stuck to the disk, rotating with it, it's going to have an angular velocity expressed in that frame, and the measure numbers of that will define as our uh, speeds there. Now, how do I snatch these out? Well, if I do R in qd dot rx, right, that's the first measure number. And how do I define these? We ultimately want to get our kinematical differential equations. So we could say that this is um, u, uh, I don't want to overwrite u1, but um, I'm going to make a quick loop here that says four uh, measure number in, I'm sorry, for unit vector in, uh, I'm screwing this all up. I meant to, I'm not reading my notes carefully. I, wa I wanted to define this in the L frame, not the R frame. And so do that, and then here for uv, if I dot it with this unit vector, I should get what I want. What am I screwing up here? Have you are in QD R set angular velocity in N U one the L's and then dot R and you lost me in the end. Oh. So uh, I'm confusing myself. So wh what we want to do right now is define uh, the kinematic differential equations. And we want to say U1 equals this, U2 equals that, and U3 equals that. Right? And to do that, <clears throat> I want to specify um, the equations if I have u1 equals um, the angular velocity of r and n dotted with l x and u2 equals dotted with l y and u3 equals this dotted with l z. Right? That's what, that's what I'm trying to get at. But we're, the way that um, Simpy Mechanics want the, wants these is in, in this form. Uh, zero equals U1 minus... All right, so that there... is the form that I, that I want those in. 
And so I'm going to now make a list. I'm going to say, well, how do I get uh, u1? I say that I do r dot angular velocity in n dotted with the unit vector minus this omega r in n dotted with, also dotted with the unit vector for unit vector in L. So if I loop through the unit vector in L, I'll get each of the unit vectors. And these are just, why are these coming out so much longer than I'm doing something wrong here? I think what I did, let me just change, in my code I did me dot product of that minus that with respect to uv. This came out simpler for some reason. Huh. Am I doing something wrong? I'm going to restart and run all. I don't know what I did. Maybe I did something screwed up in that body fix thing. Q1, Q2, Q3. That looks right. Oh, yeah. Now they came out right. I, may, I, I screwed up something. I commented out the orient new uh, there. I'm not sure what was, what was going on. But, uh, okay, so now I have the, these expressions. Right? That's what I was after. So this is the first kinematical difference equation, the second kinematical difference equation, the third. And it tells me how u is related to the q dots. Sorry about that. And so let's, let's name those. I'm going to call it the kinematical differential equations, kd. Let's call it kd. All right. So we, we have non-trivial... Non um, relationships between the u's and the u dots. That's that. Um, we can solve for the q dots from these, and that might be helpful, so let's do that. So if I solve that list of qds for um, q1 diff, q2 diff, and q3 diff, And take a look at that. And then I get Q dots in terms of the U's. All right, so those are now the explicit first order form. All the dots are on the left hand side, and this is the right hand side of the kinematical differential equations. Now, <clears throat> I forgot to add in two. So I'm going to come up here and put a plus. Well, let's just make a new. Let's do KD equals KD plus um, VX minus X diff. We'll do these as simple definitions. And VY minus Y diff. All right. So that gives the kinematical different equations for the last two coordinates. And then let's add these here. We're going to solve for x diff and y diff. All right. <clears throat> now we got all five. In these, we made non-trivial um, substitutions. And then that. All right. Five coordinates, five kinematical differential equations that relate the um, generalized speeds to the de de derivatives of the coordinates. All right. That took a lot longer than I was... <laughs> Planning. Let's go ahead and create some points now. So I'm going to make uh, a point called NO, which is like the origin. And NO is going to have a velocity of 0 in N. So we'll make that the origin point. C is this contact point. NO.locate new. And we'll call that C. And this is x times NX plus y times ny. 
So that locates that point in the ground plane. And let's uh, set its velocity in terms of the generalized speeds. Set its velocity in N to be Vx times Nx plus Vy times Ny. All right. Now let's get the uh, center of mass. It's going to be RO um, equals C dot locate new. We're going to call it RO. And then the vector from C to RO is going to be the radius times uh, LZ. Okay. And if I do now um, to get its velocity, if I do the V2 point theory, C is also fixed. And then I do N, and they're both fixed in um, L. I get this velocity expression. Notice I get a uh, I get a Q2 dot here. Did I skip setting? <clears throat> we want to ensure that our velocities are all written in terms of the U's from here on out. So I've got definitions of the Q dots that could help us do that. So I'm going to carefully look at all, all of these important velocities that we'll need to calculate FR and FR star and, and make sure that they're in terms of all of the general speeds. So here, let me just label this velocity of RO and N. And then um, if I do velocity of RO and N dot subs, and I sub in the Q dots, now I'm only a function of the generalized speeds and the coordinates, no U dots, I mean no Q dots, right? So we want all our, our velocities written in terms of just the generalized speeds and the coordinates. So I can uh, now explicitly, I'm going to set the velocity in N to V, R, O, N, subs, Q dots. All right. So that makes sure that my velocity is all in terms of the U's. And let's do this for the acceleration, too. So notice if I do RO dot A, A2 point, if I spell it right, same thing. C is in the same um, frame as, they're both in L. If I calculate that acceleration, we'll see some Q dot and Q double dots here. And we we don't want any of these. We want only, for accelerations, we want only the U's and U dots in there. So we want to replace these in the acceleration expression. Um, to do that, I need to differentiate the Q dots. So we had this Q dots here. If I, uh, I'll do a QDD dots equals, and I'm going to do k dot diff, and then um, v dot diff, and then I'm going to grab that dynamic symbols t that I told you about, for k comma v, and q dots is a dictionary, so I can do this, items. So this is a 
quick way to make a dictionary. It says for each key in value in that Q dots dictionary, differentiate the key and differentiate the value and create a new dictionary with those in it. So that's a quick way to make that dictionary. So if I type it right, right this is supposed to be 4kv in q d dots. Now I get sort of an, equ an equivalent dictionary that now shows me the replacements of the q double dots in terms of u's. But I got, I, got a, I got a q dot in there. I want to eliminate those, so I'm going to update my code here. If I do, if I also dot subs in the q dots, Now I have all the Q double dots in terms of U's, U dots, and Q's. So we're, 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 what we're doing here is eliminating Q dots and Q double dots in our velocity expressions. All right. So now that I have this, I can substitute into that acceleration expression. So let's say acceleration of R O and N equals R O dot A two point theory C N L and then if I do A R O and N dot subs first subs in the Q double dots and then also subs in the Q dots and we should get an expression now that has no Q dots and no Q double dots which I think that's true. All right. So now our acceleration is written in terms of the u's and the u dots and the q's. So I've done that carefully for, we know that we're going to need the velocity and acceleration of that center of mass to calculate fr star. So I've carefully eliminated q dots and q double dots out of these expressions using our, our kinematic differential equation relationships. Questions here? I think that's a lot. Is the order you substitute Yes. It's, 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 um, if I, uh, well, sometimes it is, sometimes it might not be for this case. It, it is? Okay. So what I did here, I could, um, I chained this. I said substitute the Q dots, Q double dots first, and then substitute the Q dots. And I did that particularly in that order to ensure that um, if I substitute, if I had a Q double dot in there and I subs in just Q dots, it's going to replace the, it's, I'm still going to get a, it's going to replace the inner terms of those derivatives with Q dots. We could, I could just do that instead of talking about it abstractly. So, for example, if I, if I do this, <clears throat> I replace the Q dots, but, it's, but there's still a Q dot here. And... And the reason for that is, is that in the previous expression, um, it there there must have been a. I don't know, why, it's not coming to me. Well, why why is that? I, the the moral of the story, instead of me wasting time trying to figure it out in detail, is that. Um, just like you substitute on paper, an order or may matter. It, it may ma it may matter here too, and you um, things may not substitute exactly as you expect. So let's see if we can figure that one out. I substituted the q dots. All right. So the expression that is odd is that uh, there's a 
there's a Q1 dot and a U1 dot right here. And I want to substitute them with these two. And the equivalent expression then is negative R sine. Which one is this one? This one is that one, right? So this Q1 dot, double dot, it put that into here, differentiated it, and when it differentiated it, it had to take a, it had to get a Q2 dot. So that didn't get eliminated because because of that process. It substituted it in, took the derivative. And, it, and then it left us with that Q2, Q2 dot. So I, I made sure to subs in the Q dots first, the Q double dots first. So it snatched that one, snatched that one, and then I substituted the Q dots. And then everything was smooth. Does that make sense? So the order mattered in that case because of that term. And in fact, it would probably do it on this one too, Q, except that one's a simple one. Right, so it did that one correctly. But the fact that this, this one had a Q2 dot in it, we ended up having that hanging, hanging value. All right, so let's, let's, let's get this done here. Subs Q double dots first, and then subs that. And I want to set the acceleration of RO and N. RO dot set ACC in N to this new term that's all in that has no q dots or q, q double dots in it. Q D dots. All right. So now I've set my accelerations. Now we've got some velocity constraints here to deal with in a similar way. So the velocity constraints are that the point fixed in at C, the point fixed in R at C has a velocity of zero in the ground plane, right? So let's get that velocity first. If I say C dot v two point theory um, with respect to R O in the in frame, and they're both on R, that's my velocity expression. Right? And if I dot this with nx and ny, or yx and, and yy, either any of the any axes there, any orth, orthogonal axes in that plane, I will get the two velocity constraints that I want. So, constraint one, um, let's just name this. Velocity of C in N All right. And then if I do velocity of C in N dotted with Y X. There's constraint one. Constraint two, velocity of C and N dotted with Y, Y. OK? Now, these are two equations that we can solve, use to solve for two dependent speeds. And then the other three speeds are going to be independent. And if you notice, they're all linear. In the use, linear in the use. That's that's how we we want to get these simple non-holonomic constraints that are linear in the use, and we have one, and we can use those two equations to eliminate things. So let's um, I'll just throw these in a list, and then um, I can solve for the dependent speeds. 
like so. Give it those constraint equations. And I'm going to say that Vx and Vy are my dependent speeds. And there we go. So now, now we could eliminate Vx and Vy from the equations and put it only in terms of u1, u2, and u3 and the coordinates. All right, so, we so now we have these velocity constraints. Uh, what's next? So, <clears throat> I think if we look at, let's look at again RO dot velocity in N and RO dot ACC in N. These, the velocity and the acceleration of, of point RO is the, only, we, is the only point of interest. And then we also need the angular velocity of R in N. So these are the things that are going to show up in FR equals FR star. So this is, right, we have it all in terms of the U's. And, they, and it turns out those are all in terms of the independent use. And we chose those in that way to be nice like that. This velocity term has Vx, has two dependent speeds in it. And the acceleration term has these uh, derivatives of the dependent speeds. We could substitute the these expressions for the dependent speeds into all into these two equations, and then we get um, these expressed completely in the independent speeds. Okay. I think yeah. so. Let's <clears throat> set the velocity of R O in in again. <clears throat> to the velocity of R O and N, but substitute in the dependent speeds. So now, that's the velocity of R O and N only in terms of the independent speeds and the coordinates. The same thing, R O dot set A C C and N to R dot A C C and N dot oh, we need to do one thing first. Let's create in the same way that we did before, we're gonna have the um, dependent accelerations <clears throat> and we're gonna have K dot diff V dot diff with respect to ME dot dynamic symbols T. I should just T equals ME dot dynamic symbols. Make that a little simpler. For K comma V in depth speeds dot items. Oh yeah, this needs parentheses right here. It says v dot vx dot and vy dot, but we pop some q dots back in there because we took a derivative. So we want to substitute those out also. So I can do add that right here dot subs q dots. Okay, now I have the derivative of the independent speeds all in terms of the 
use u dots and no q. There's no q dots on the side, and there's no vx any terms. There's no x dots, no y dots. So now I can substitute those into that acceleration expression. So if I come back down here, subs in the depth ACCs, and I might need to also subs in the um, depth speeds. And if I do that, RO dot ACC and N. Reference frame has no. Oh. oh this is uh, supposed to be RO. There we go. Okay, so now I have that acceleration all in terms of the independent speeds. All right. This is. Is everybody following this, what I'm doing here? We only need, we need those three. We need the acceleration and velocity of the center of mass and the angular velocity of the disk. And those are the only things that are going to go into FR star. And if I write them in terms of the independent speeds completely, I've, and I eliminate all the dependent speeds and all the dependent um, then, then, I've, then uh, that, that, that's what we're trying to do. <laughs> okay, so now um, let's set up some there's some loads, and there's only one, RO. Acting in RO, there's a negative M times G times NZ. All right? That's the one force acting on the system. And then um, let's get an inertia definition. If I define this, I'm going to find it in the L frame. Um, M divided by 4 times R squared. M divided by 2 times R squared. And M divided by 4 times R squared. So this um, comes from, if I look up in a table of inertias for a, a thin disk, about the, um, this is the rotational axis, it's m over 2 r squared, and then about the radial, two radial axes, it's m over 4. So I define that inertia, and then I can create a body disk, center mass, reference frame, mass, inertia about center mass. And there's a rigid body. It's only one body is here, but I still put it in a list because that's the way Kane's method wants it. And now we are finally here to get fr equals every star. So if I do Kane equals me dot Kane's method, <clears throat> I've got all of these things written in terms of just the independent generalized speeds. So I can do this. I can say Q1, make this explicit, Q independent, well first uh, in reference frame in, and then Q independent equals Q1, Q2, Q3, X, and Y. And then uh, U independent, the independent speeds, we chose those to be U1, U2, and U3, not Vx and Vy. There's the kinematical differential equations, and we labeled those as Kd. 
up above. And then um, we can tell it, well, what are the independent speeds? U dependent equals Vx Vy. And then also our velocity constraints. And we called those velocity cons. So these are some extra arguments. The fir first time we used Kane's method, we only had independent Q, U, and independent and KDEs. Now, I notice I have two extra independent coordinates, right? But we have only the essential U's here. And, I, and then I tell it, well, these two are the extra dependent coordinates, and there's some velocity constraints that relate those to those. So that's how you specify for a non-holonomic system here. And then I can do uh, fr comma fr star equals um, Kane, Kane's equations, and then you give it the body, the list of bodies, and the list of forces and torques. And if we look at these, um, let's check out their shape first. Three by three, right? We get one equation per independent generalized speed. I want to check also this. <clears throat> this is sort of interesting. In the FR, the only time varying thing is Q2. In the FR star, Q1, Q2, U1, U2, U3, U1 dot, U2 dot, U3 dot. There is no Q3, and there is no X and Y. They don't show up in the equations of motion. Let's do 0 equals sm dot trig simp fr plus fr star. Here's our equations of motion. And it matches what we see here. We only see Q1, Q2, no Q3. We see all three independent generalized speeds and the derivatives of all independent generalized speeds here. Okay? So this is an interesting fact that um, these are the dynamic equations of motion. Um, they do not depend on some of the coordinates. They just drop out. And those coordinates are uh, called ignorable coordinates. It turns out that if we ignored them from the beginning, we wouldn't even have to worry about them. Now, you don't always know what are, what are going to be ignorable coordinates, but after you build up some experience with typical types of a lot, uh, constraints and systems, um, you will maybe be able, be able to eliminate, eliminate those at the beginning and not have to think about them. So you can actually formulate this whole problem that we just did much simpler. And I thought I might have time for today, but I'm not. Um, and then x and y don't matter either. So the dynamic, what it says is the dynamics of the disk, it doesn't matter what position you're at on the table, has no bearing on how the disk is moving. And it also says that the rotational angle of the disk has no bearing on the dynamics either. So it's probably easy to think about, like if I got a disk moving around and I pick it up and put it over here on the table, that it's still gonna, the, dyna the dynamics will be the same. Um, but it's also the case, too, of that ang it doesn't matter what the angle is. It only matters what the angular rate is of the, of the rolling. Angular rate is Q3 about the disk's um, uh, axis. Okay. So we have ignorable coordinates there. Um, but 
we can um, do zero dot Jacobian. Well, let's do um, u equals sm dot matrix u one, u two, u three, and then um, zero dot Jacobian respect to u diff. This is uh, the mass matrix. And then uh, the, this term would be m times u dot diff minus 0. And that might need some simplification. All right. And then you could solve for u dots. So that here's the explicit right-hand side of these equations. It's pretty simple. Um, so this is u1 dot equals this, u2 dot equals that, u3 dot equals that. So those are our dynamical equations. And then we also had our, um, these are our kinematical ones. But we would need this definition completely. So these last three cells <clears throat> are the full set of equations if you wanted to know how everything evolved in time. So if I substitute these into here for the dependent speeds, then I have a set of three dynamical equations explicit, and I have a set of five um, kinematics equations. And these, these are not essential to integrate the equations of motion. Um, you won't find x, you won't find um, the, these terms aren't, aren't in here, right, in these other sets. So I could, I could erase these two I could integrate these this equations, but I wouldn't know where what position the uh, the disk moved to. I would just know how it's yaw roll and um, and pitch dynamics occurred. But I can add these two, which are just functions of the dependent speeds and the coordinates. Integrate those also, and this is going to tell me what x x and y do. Also, if I wanted to find the x. So these are, because they're, they're associated with these ignorable coordinates, they're not essential. And these are, the, these are the essential equations. That one and that one. But, but I can add this and this. Two extra differential equations if I want to know what x, x and y are as we integrate them. All right. We didn't get to integrate them. You just, we just got to go through that long. But so uh, next morning, I'll we'll integrate these equations of motion and uh, see how the disk rolls, and then, um, and then we'll talk about trajectory optimization. OK? <clears throat> Qu last questions on that? Did that make sense? So this is, an, this is how you handle a non-holonomic system. It's not as trivial as what the last example was. Um, you have to carefully eliminate things. If you, if you want to deal with these um, dependent generalized speeds, okay? I'll post that. I'll add a, add a few notes and stuff to it so it's a little more, a little easier to follow. All righty, folks. We'll see you Wednesday.